Okay, moving on to task number two with the site of origin and the do home site. So here at the site three, we need to configure router R2 and R4 to prevent the routes originated from the site itself from being re-advertised back to itself. So what it means is, let me bring up the diagram and kind of clean that up a little bit. So since we have a site number three, switch one being a do home to R2 or an R4, what's potentially could happen is when the R, uh, switch one advertise routes to R2, R2 will Obviously, we distribute that to BGP, send it out to all of its IBGP neighbor, and one of those neighbor is the R4. And when the R4 learns route from R2, it can potentially redistribute that back and then re-advertise it to the same site where the route was originated from. And obviously, that is not desirable. So what we're going to be doing here is to use a feature called site of origin to stop that from happening. So the way that it works is as soon as the router R2 receives any routes that's coming in from its CE device, it would tag the route using a extended community site of origin. So it's just basically nothing but a tag. So all of the BGP routes, as you will see in the second here, will be tagged by the SOO value. And at the same time, when the router R4 fast 00 will be configuring the router to also look for that particular SOO value. So that way, if R4 is seeing the route coming in with the same SOO value, it would not advertise that back out that particular interface okay and obviously the same thing has to happen for the route that r4 learns from switch one and r4 has to redistribute that out and advertise back out to r2 we're going to have to configure pretty much exact same thing right here at the r2 fast zero one okay so the route doesn't get re-advertised back in this direction either okay so our configuration to start on our router r2 so first we're going to have to tag all of our routes from site three with the site of origin, and that's going to be accomplished through a route map. So we're going to call it SOO permit 10. And when we do the set command, it's going to be under the extended community. The question mark you can see right here, site of origin, extended community, so SOO. And you can pretty much give it any number as long as they are unique or uh, for the particular site. So here, since it's site number three, let's give it like three colon three. Okay. And then on the fast ethernet 01, where the route's going to be coming from, we're going to have to use the command IP VRF sitemap, and then reference it back to our route map that we configure, which is SOO. Okay, so by doing this, any routes that's coming in to our fast 01 will be tagged by SOO 3, uh, 3 colon 3. And at the same time, if the R2 has to advertise a route back out, from a BGP route that has received, it would not advertise anything that has the SOO of the same value. Okay, so you can see that the neighbor adjacency bounds briefly, and that's due to the SOO change. Okay, let's complete the same thing on R4 with the route map SOO permit 10 set extended community SOO 33. Okay, and then on fast 00, we do IP VRF sitemap SOO. Okay, let it bounce real quick. There you go. And now if you look at on our router R4, it would be receiving the switch one loopback route from R2. And if you look into the VPN V4 route that it has received, let's look at 101000 in particular, slash 24. Let me spell it correctly. You can see right here, one uh, this one, is a local route. It has tagged the route with SOO3 colon 3. And this one is the route that is learning from router R2. And it's also tagged by R2, the SOO of 3 colon 3. Okay, now to prove that the R4 would not re advertise the route from R2 back into the same site, what we can do is on R4, let's do a quick debug IP here, PVRFC1. And then we're going to try to clear the EIGRP neighbor to switch one. So that would be a clear IP EIGRP VRF C1 neighbor out of the fast zero zero. Okay, give it a second for, I let that debug output to kind of run through. Okay, I see some loop detected already. So let it finish for a bit and I would disable debug. There you go, you all. And if you scroll up, what we are looking for here Thought something scrolled by pretty quickly. 
right here, you can see that these sets of routes, which are the switch one loop back 10 through 12, are being denied by the site of origin because it contains the same value as the one that's being configured on the fast zero, zero interface, which is the interface is trying to advertise out. And then it's being marked as the loop being detected. Okay, so that's how we prevent a route from being re-advertised back to the original sites when your C divisor do home to two different PE routers. Okay, and that's complete our task number two. Okay, next is our task number three. We're still dealing with the site of origin, but this time we're gonna look at the sites with the backdoor link. So we have, to, we have to configure site two and four to prevent their own routes from being learned across the backdoor link. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram here. Let's clean that up. So very similar to the site number three that the switch one has a, a do home connections to R2 and R4 and potentially the route can get free advertised back to its own site. We can pretty much almost experience the same issues. Let's take the site two, for example, if an R6 advertised the route to R1, R1 redistribute that to BGP, send it across to R2. So R2 kind of passed along to R7 and R7 without actually realizing that the route is originated from R6, re advertise the route back out to R6 right here. So R6 essentially is gonna be learning or potentially can learn its own route coming from a different site. And that's something that we want to prevent from happening and we can do that or achieve that still using the site of origin. And the way it works is very similar to what we saw in the previous task. The R1 is going to have to tag all the routes that's coming from site 2 with uh, some value of site origin. And once that route's come across to R2, let's pick the site of origin. So SOO, since this is site number 2, let's use a value 2, 2. Okay, so as the route coming across to R2, what we used to see in the previous task is we configured a IPVRF sitemap commands right here on R2 fast 0, 0 with the matching SOO. But if you do that, R7 would never, in this scenario, be able to uh, learn the R6 loopbacks through MPLS. Okay, so that's not what we, uh, what we want, basically. So instead of doing that, what we're going to be configuring is actually on the interface of the routers that terminates the backdoor link. So instead of configuring the IPVRF sitemaps on the R2 fast 00, we're actually gonna be configuring right here and the R6. And that's pretty much like a gateway to the different sites. And that's basically what catches all the route that's coming in that has or being tagged by its own SOO value. So the SOO will actually get carried across. So when it get, the route gets redistributed from R2 to R7, that's the EIGRP routes. Those EIGRP routes will also carry the SOO of 2.2. And when that same route comes across and hit router R6 here, R6 will say, hey, that's SOO is actually belonging to my site. It will not accept that route. So we have to configure the IP VRF sitemap with the matching SOO in this case, on the router that terminates the backdoor link. Okay, the same thing in the opposite direction we have to do this is the marking or tacking of the route being advertised from site 4 and R2, and we can use the SOO of 44. And then as the route gets looped around like this, eventually we hit R7, and we have to configure R7 to prevent it from learning the route that has the same SOO44. All right, so let's start our configuration on the router R1. Actually, before we do that, I want to show you what the EIGRP topology looks like right now on R6 so we can see the difference before and after we have that loop prevention mechanism in place. So on R6, if we do show IP EIGRP topology of its own loopback 10, 660 slash 24, you can see that one is belongs to local loopback 10 and it's a connected route. It's also have a second route, it's topology table, which is coming from 67.7, that's R7. And this is the re-advertisement we're talking about that we want to prevent. So this is the undesirable route that we're trying to get rid of. Okay, so now on R1, we do route map SOO, let's call it site two, permit 10, and then we set external community SOO22. Okay, and then we said that we want to prevent the routes with the same SOO from being learned into R6000. Actually, let me attach that to the interface fast01.16 on R1 first. 
Okay, IPVRF sitemap SOO site2. Okay, so now all the routes from site2 will be tagged with SOO22. And now we can jump over to, actually let's do show IP BGP just to do a quick verification. All 6600 slash 24. You can see the route is being tagged with the SOO22 already. So now we can be on R6 and then just do another check on the EIGRP route in the topology. You can see that the route that it's learning from R7 now has the SOO tag or extended community of 22, and that's because the, let me again clear the diagram, the route has complete its loop right here. So from R1 across the MPLS to R2, R7, and then coming back to R6, and it has the SOO of 22. Okay, as you see right here. And now if you do a, before we complete the configuration, R6, let's do a debug IP EIGRP. And then we're gonna create a route map called SOO site2 also, permit 10, set extended community, SOO22. And now on the interface, which is the backdoor link interface, you can attach that to our sitemap with the same name, enter. And now we're just gonna give it a couple seconds to run through the updates. So I'm trying to see if I can catch it. Let's, uh, let's scroll up and take a look at the debugs output. Let's see if we can find the routes that belongs to R6. Right here, 660, 661, 662. You can see it's a, this route is being learned from R7. Looks like it's running through the, another updates. So let me kill the debug real quick. Okay, so let me scroll back up right here. So you can see it's being marked as a SOO loop. And if you're trying to issue the show command on the EHRP topology one more time, you can see that we only now see the local routes of R6 and we no longer see the route that's coming from R7, okay? Because this was being blocked by the detections of the SOO value. Okay, so now we have to do the same thing with our R7. So show IP EIGIP topology 7700 slash 24 and R7 is learning its own route from R6. So what we need to do is come up with a route map SOO site four. Permit 10, set extended community, SOO 4 and 4. So this will be the detection and blocking piece of it. We're gonna have to get over to a router R2 in a sec to complete the insertion. IP VRF sitemap, copy paste. Okay, so now we can go back to router R2 and do the same route map, SOO site four, permit 10, set extended community, SOO 44, and then on our interface fast zero zero, which is the interface right here, we want to insert the SOO value to the routes. So IP VRF site map, SOO site four. Okay, so now we just show IP VGP VPN V4 all 7700. Somehow I'm not seeing the value quite yet, so let's do a show uh, route map real quick. So I have right here SOO site 4 with the set, and then let's do, uh, it's actually 00. Okay, not sure why I didn't take it, so let's do that again. Oh, let's have a typo, that's why. There you go. Okay, so neighbor change and then show command and we are now seeing SOO of 404. Okay, so what it means is right now, all the routes is being advertised from R7 to R2. When it gets redistributed to BGP is being tagged by SOO 404 and then once it loops around to R7, R7 should be denying that route. So if you go back to R7 and then the show IP EIGRP topology. Of that, you can see that we no longer see the routes that we saw earlier coming from R6. Okay, so that's how you can prevent routes from looping around when you have a sites with a shared backdoor link using the site of origin.
And that's complete our task number three.